can make a way. Hey, hey, so humble yourself and pray and guard his Torah. Obey each day. Hallelujah. And Moshe said, Hear, O Israel, Yahweh your Elohim, Yahweh is one, and you shall love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart, with all your being, and with all your might. These words which I am commanding you today shall be in your heart, and you shall impress them upon your children, and shall speak of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way. When you lie down and when you rise up, and shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontless between your eyes, and you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom to everyone worshiping with us at home. Uh, it's a blessing to be here today. It's a beautiful day in Calhoun, Georgia. I mean, it's just great, wonderful fall temperatures. That's right. The name of the message today is the serpent seed and the sin of the woman. And I've spoken often about the sin of Adam and cautioned men not to enter into that same sin. I mean, yeah. So we're not going to delve deeply into that today because I don't want to give the men a complex and besides, Proverbs 29, 1 says, one often reproved, hardening his neck is suddenly broken and there is no healing. So, uh, so we don't want to risk that. Uh, but ultimately, Adam did, did not put his foot down and insist that his wife step away from the deception. Uh, <clears throat> then to add insult to injury, after allowing her to pursue her own desire, he agreed to enter into the transgression with her. So, he did not take care of his woman, who Yahweh Elohim had given him, and he knowingly transgressed the command of Elohim. Amen? All right. Today, I'm going to run the risk of talking about the sin of the woman. And that's again, is the name of today's message is the serpent seed and the sin of the woman. And, and I hope this brings some new light. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 3. Bear sheet chapter 3. We're going to start reading in verse 1. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1. And the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field which Yahweh Elohim had made. And he said to the woman, Is it true that Elohim has said, Do not eat of every tree of the garden? So he asked her a question, which immediately uh, she answers by demonstrating that she understands the Torah concerning this tree and by giving the correct answer. And so watch this. And the woman said to the serpent, We are to eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Elohim has said, Do not eat of it, nor touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said to the woman, In other words, he begins to instruct her, and this is important to our study today. You shall certainly not die, for Elohim knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes shall be open, and you shall be like Elohim, knowing good and evil. And the woman saw that the tree was a, was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable. You see that word? Desirable to make one wise. And she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loin coverings for themselves, and they heard the sound of Yahweh Elohim walking about in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Yahweh Elohim among the trees of the garden. And Yahweh Elohim called unto Adam and said to him, Where are you? And you know what, gentlemen? Yahweh calls us three times in a year to appear before him too. All right? And he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. And he said, who made you know that you were naked? 
Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? And the man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I ate. And Yahweh Elohim said to the woman, What is this you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me and I ate. And Yahweh Elohim said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all livestock and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you go, uh, on your belly you are to go and eat dust all the days of your life. And I put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall crush your head and you shall crush his heel. We'll probably talk a little more about that later on. To the woman he said, I greatly increase your sorrow and your conception. Bring forth children in pain. And your there's that word again. Your desire is for your husband and he does rule over you. And to the man he said, because you have listened to the voice of your wife, who was in transgression, I mean, all right, this is not about, don't ever listen to your wife, Buster, all right? She was in transgression and he did what she said. And have eaten of the tree which I commanded you, saying, do not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you are to eat of it all the days of your life. And the ground shall bring forth thorns and thistles for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you are to eat bread until you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you return. And the man called his wife's name Hawa, because she became the mother of all living. And Yahweh Elohim made coats of skin for the man and his wife and dressed them. And Elohim said, See, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat it and live forever. So Yahweh sent him out of the garden of Aden to till the ground whom from which he was taken. And he drove the man out and he placed Caribbean at the east of the garden of Eden and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. She transgressed the Torah to not to eat of the fruit of the tree that was in the midst of the garden. The serpent got her to state that she knew what the command was, and then he said, you shall not surely die if you transgress the commands of Elohim. That is what is being said contextually, not adding to really. All right. She knew what the command was and persuaded him to follow her own desire but she persuaded her own desire. All right, now, Genesis two fifteen. And Yahweh Elohim took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and to guard it. And Yahweh Elohim commanded the man, saying, Eat of every tree of the garden, but do not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall certainly die. And Yahweh Elohim said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I am going to make a helper for him as his counterpart, a helper. Now, I can see Yahweh up there saying something like, I wonder what my man is up to today. Let's go see. And, and while they're looking down, I can just imagine Yahweh saying something like, oh, there he is. What's, what's he up to? Oh, no. He, he, he's not, he's not going to do that. Oh, yep, he did. It's, it's not good for the man to be alone. I'm going to make him a helper. I want to share with you this word helper. Okay. The word helper is this word right here. It's Azar in Hebrew. All right. This is Azar. It's spelled Ayin, uh, Ayin, Zion, Resh. All right. Now this is, this is it in the pictograph here. Ayan, Zion, Resh. All right. Now, the uh, when we look at the letters, they tell us something about the meaning of this word. When we when we look at the letters, uh, we want to look at what the letters mean as we go along. All right. So, for instance, here's your Ayan, and it looks like what? An eye. All right. Well, what does an eye do? It sees. It looks. It watches. Right. Now, this is a Zion. And, and it might be hard to tell, but a Zion is a weapon or a tool, okay? Now, the question is, is 
What does one do with a weapon? Huh? You use it. Okay. What what does what does one use a weapon for? Okay, so yeah, for, for protection. Okay. All right. And then the resh here is 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 a, is drawn as a head, and it means the head, the first, the leader. Uh, um, it can mean it can mean the number one, or it can mean the top type of type of head there. Okay, so uh, when we when we look at this, we uh, see what a helper is supposed to do. All right, to watch and protect the head. Okay, that's that's what we get pictographically out of Azair. <clears throat> the helper's supposed to watch and protect its head or leader. So, did Hawa fail at watching and protecting her head or her husband for whom she was created? Did she watch and protect her head? No. As a matter of fact, she put her own desire ahead of Everything including his welfare because she gave it to him too. Right? 3 6. Genesis 3 6. And the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree desirable to make one wise. And she took its fruit and ate, and she also gave it to her husband with her, and he ate. And then when we look down in verse 16, it's no coincidence that Yahweh says to her, to the woman, he said, I greatly increase your sorrow and your conception, bring forth children in pain, and your desire is for your husband, and he does rule over you. All right? So she put her own desire ahead of him, and his head too, by the way. Who was his head? Yahweh. All right? And she caused the whole family to transgress the command of Elohim. She did not protect her head for whom she was created. She abandoned everything at the suggestion that there was more for the taking than what Yahweh had said to take. All right? You know, he said they could have everything except one thing. What if the woman had said to the serpent something like, I know you've got little bitty ears on the side of your head and everything. But did you not hear what I said? The command is, you do not eat nor touch lest you die. And I'm going to tell Adam about this. <laughs> and you need to get out of my face. Okay? Now, how different things might have been. All right? But that was her sin. All right? That was her sin. But what about this serpent seed aspect of this here? Well, I want to tell you this. There, there are some teachings out there that, that this serpent seed has got something to do with some improprieties that, that created a, a different branch of individuals and that there are different human beings and that, uh, uh, and, and it's usually, it's typically advanced by some sort of supremacist group. Not always, but that's, you know, and it depends on which, which, uh, variety of supremacist you are on what variety of, of person the serpent seed offspring tends to be. For instance, if you're, 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 you're a, a white supremacist, it's oftentimes it's, it's the, it's the black folks that are, that are the, the serpent seed, the descendants of, 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 of Cain, uh, or, you know, uh, if you're black supremacist, it's oftentimes the white folks that are that are the the serpent seed, and then there's this other thing where both of them hate the Jews, and they'll, you know, and then the Jews will be the you know the 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 subject of all the uh, 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 animus. If that's what you're hoping to hear some about today in this, you're probably going to be sorely disappointed. But I hope you'll stick around and listen to what what we've got to say today because <clears throat> the serpent seed was the teachings that nullify the commands of Elohim. All right? He's been sowing seed ever since the garden. He sowed it in Yahshua's day, and he is sowing it now. It's the seed which, once planted, brings forth death. Now, we're going to look at some snaky passages today and see if we see any racial profiling or the same type of Torah breaking that was going on in the, in the garden, okay? Let's look at Matthew chapter 3. Matthew 
They are going to be snaky passages. Matthew chapter 3, verse 1. And in those days, Yochanan, the immerser, came proclaiming in the wilderness of Yehuda and saying, Repent, for the reign of the heavens has come near. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Yeshayahu, that would be Isaiah, saying, A voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of Yahweh, make his paths straight. And Yochanan had a garment of camel's hair and a leather girdle around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then Yerushalayim and all Yehuda and all the country around the Jordan went out to him, and they were immersed by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. And seeing many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his immersion, he said to them, Brood of adders, told you the snaky passage, Brood of adders, who has warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Bear therefore fruits worthy of repentance. And do not think to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as father. For I say to you that Elohim is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. And the axe is already laid at the root of the trees. Every tree then which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I indeed immerse you in water into repent, unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to bear. He shall immerse you in the set-apart spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he shall thoroughly cleanse his threshing floor and gather his wheat into his storehouse, but the chaff he shall burn with unquenchable fire. Then Yahshua came from Galil to Yochanan at the Yarden to be immersed by him. But Yochanan was hindering him, saying, I need to be immersed by you, and you come to me. But Yahshua, answering, said to him, Permit it now, for thus it is fitting for us to fill all righteousness. And then he permitted him. And having been immersed, Yahshua went up immediately from the water, and see the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of Elohim descending like a dove and coming upon him. And see a voice out of the heavens saying, This is my son, the beloved, in whom I did delight. Now, John was not the only one to call these guys brood adders. Right? So I want to look at another place, Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. We're going to start reading verse 31. And this is Yahshua speaking here. Because of this I say to you, all sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven men, but the, but the blasphemy against the Spirit shall not be forgiven men. And whoever speaks a word against the son of Adam, it shall be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the set-apart Spirit, it shall not be forgiven him, either in this age or in the age to come. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree rotten and its fruit rotten. For a tree is known by its fruit. Brood of adders, how are you able to speak what is good being wicked? For the, for the mouth speaks from the overflow of the heart. The good man brings forth what is good from the good treasure of his heart, and the wicked man brings forth what is wicked from the wicked treasure. And I say to you that for every idle word men speak, they shall give an account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you shall be declared righteous, and by your words you shall be declared unrighteous. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered, saying, Teacher, we wish to see a sign from you. But he answering said to them, A wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign shall be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the stomach of the great fish, so shall the son of Adam be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Men of Nineveh shall stand up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Yonah and look, a greater one than Yonah is here. The sovereignness of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it for she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Shalomo and look, a greater than Shalomo is here. And when the unclean spirit goes out of a man. He goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. And then it says, I shall return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, 
It finds it empty, swept, and decorated. Then it goes and takes with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last of that man is worse than the first. So shall it be with the wicked generation. And while he was still talking to the crowd, see, his mother and brothers stood outside seeking to speak with him. And one said to him, See, your mother and your brothers are standing outside seeking to speak with you. But he answering said to the one who spoke to him, Who is my mother and who are my brothers? And having stretched out his hand towards his taught ones, he said, See, my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the, what's that word? Desire. There's that word again. For whoever does the desire of my father, who is in the heavens, is my brother and sister and mother. So you see how he's talking about doing the desire of the one you were created for. Interesting. Note that those he considered to be his real family or seed were those doing the desire of Yahweh and not those blood slash family slash offspring of adders who were advancing something different than the desire of Yahweh. All right. Uh, Matthew 15. It's easy when we do it this way, isn't it? You just keep turning a couple of pages. Matthew 15 and verse 1. Then there came to Yahshua scribes and Pharisees from Yerushalayim, saying, Why do your taught ones transgress the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat bread. But he answering said to them, Why do you also transgress the commands of Elohim because of your traditions? For Elohim has commanded, saying, Respect your father and your mother, and he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, Whoever says to his father or mother, Whatever profit you might have received from me has been dedicated, is certainly released from respecting his father or mother. So you have nullified the command of Elohim by your tradition. Hypocrites. Yes, Yahweh rightly prophesied about you, saying, This people draw near to me with their mouth and respect me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain do they worship me. What's that word? Teaching is teachings, the commands of men. Now, we're not going to turn there, but in First Timothy uh, chapter 4, verse 1, Paul calls it the doctrines or teachings of demons. And even 700 years before Yahshua comes on the scene, Isaiah is using some very similar language to talk about this same sort of attitude. Let's look at Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59, we are going to be on page 459 in the 1998 ISR. Isaiah 59, verse 1. Look, the hand of Yahweh has not become too short to save, nor his ear too heavy to hear. But your crookednesses have separated you from your Elohim, and your sins have hidden his face from you from hearing. For your hands have been defiled with blood, and your fingers with crookedness. Your lips have spoken falsehood, your tongues mutter unrighteousness. No one calls for righteousness, and no one pleads for truth. They trust in emptiness and speak worthlessness. They conceive trouble and bring forth wickedness. Watch this. They have hatched adder's eggs, and they weave the spider's web. Whoever eats their eggs dies. Now let's see. Transgression of the commands causes death, right? Whoever eats their eggs dies, and when one is broken, an adder is hatched. Their webs do not become garments, nor do they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of wickedness, and a deed of violence is in their hands. Their feet run to evil, and they hurry to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of wickedness. Wasting and ruin are in their highways. The way of peace they have not known, and there is no Right ruling in their ways. They have made crooked paths for themselves. Let's see, Yahshua said the path that leads to life is what? Straight and narrow. All right? They have made crooked ways, paths for themselves. Whoever treads in them shall not know peace. Therefore, right ruling has been far from us, and righteousness does not reach us. We look for light, but there is darkness, for brightness, but we walk in thick darkness. We feel for the wall like the blind, and we... Feel as without eyes. At noon we stumble as at twilight in deserted places like the dead. 
All of us growl like bears and moan sadly like doves. We, we look for right ruling, but there is none. For deliverance, but it is far from us. For our transgressions have increased before you and our sins witnessed against us. For our transgressions are with us. And as for our crookedness, we know them. Transgression and being untrue to Yahweh and turning away from our Elohim, speaking oppression and apostasy, conceiving and pondering words of falsehood from the heart. Hmm. The, and right ruling is driven back. And righteousness stands far off. For truth has fallen in the street, and right is unable to enter. And the truth is lacking, and whoever turns away from evil makes himself a prey. Sounds like today, doesn't it? And Yahweh saw, and it displeased him that there was no right ruling, and he saw that there was no man, and was astonished that there was no intercessor, so his own arm saved for him, and his righteousness upheld him. And he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of deliverance on his head, and he put on garments of vengeance for clothing and wrapped himself with the ardor as a mantle. According to their deeds, so he repays wrath to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies. He repays recompense to the coastlands. And they shall fear the name of Yahweh from the west and his esteem from the rising of the sun when he comes like a distressing stream which the Spirit of Yahweh drives on. And the Redeemer comes to Zion, and those turning from transgression in Yaakov declares Yahweh. As for me, this is my covenant with them, said Yahweh. My spirit that is upon you and my words that I have put in your mouth shall not be withdrawn from your mouth, nor from the mouth of your descendants, nor from the mouth of your descendants' descendants, said Yahweh, from this time and forever." It looks like these teachings and attitudes have been around for a long, long time. Amen? All right. Now, I want to demonstrate to you the difference between the seed of the Son of Man and the seed of the serpents. Matthew chapter 13. Now we'll get a look at what the difference is between the seeds. Matthew 13, we're going to start reading verse 1 and be on page 931. Matthew 13, verse 1. And on that day, Yahweh went out, I'm sorry. And on that day, Yahshua went out of the house and sat by the sea. And large crowds were gathered together to him so that he went into a boat and sat down and all the crowds stood on the beach. And he spoke to them much in parables saying, the seer went out to sow. Now, now what does a sower sow? Seed. That's right. And as he sowed, some indeed fell by the wayside and the birds came and devoured them and others fell on rocky places where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up because they had no depth of soil. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered. And others fell among thorns, and the thorns came up and choked them. And others fell on good soil and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And the taught ones came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? And he answering said to them, because it has been given to you to know the secrets of the reign of, of the heavens, but to them it has not been given. For whoever possesses to him more shall be given, and he shall have overflowingly, but whoever does not possess, even what he possesses shall be taken away from him. Because of this, I speak to them in parables. Because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in them the prophecy of Yeshua Yahu is completely filled, which says, Hearing you shall hear, and by no means understand, and seeing you shall see, and by no means perceive. For the heart of this people has become thickened, and their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their heart and turn back, and I heal them. And blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. For truly I say to you that many prophets and righteous ones long to see what you see and did not see it and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. 
And then you then hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears what? The word of the rain and does not understand it, then the wicked would come and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is what is sown by the wayside. Now, isn't that interesting? And, and that sown on rocky places is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. I want to back up just a little bit. Back up there in verse 19. And when anyone hears the word of the rain and does not understand it, then who is it that comes? The wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in the heart. Okay, this is what is sown by the wayside. And that sown on rocky places is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but is short-lived. And when pressure or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. And that sown among thorns is he who hears the word and the worry of this age and the deceit of riches choke the word and it becomes fruitless. And that sown on the good soil is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Another parable he put before them saying, the rain of the heavens has become like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed darnel among the wheat and went away. And when the blade sprouted and bore fruit, then the darnel also appeared. And the servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then does that does it have the darnel? And he said to them, a man, an enemy, did this. Now, what would an enemy be? A an adversary, right? What, what's the Hebrew word for adversary? Satan. All right. And the servant said to him, Do you wish then that we go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the darnel, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let them both grow together until the harvest. And at that, and at the time of the harvest, I shall say to the reapers, First gather the darnel and bind them in bundles and burn them, but gather the wheat into my granary. So, I want to look next at John chapter 8, why, where I, uh, Yahshua identifies the serpent seed. And see if it's a physical seed or if he's pointing at something else. John chapter 8. So we saw from that last chapter that, that the sower is the son of Adam, and he is sowing the seed, which is what? The word. Amen. We good with that? All right. Yohanan chapter 8. We're going to start reading in verse 25. Page 1029. And they said to him, Who are you? And Yahshua said to them, All together that which I even say to you, I have much to say and to judge concerning you, but... He who sent me is true, and what I heard from him, these words I speak to the world. They did not know that he spoke to them of the Father. So Yahshua said to them, When you lift up the son of Adam, then you shall know that I am he, and that I do none at all of myself, but as my Father taught me, these words I speak. And he who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases him. As he was speaking these words, many believed in him. Now, for those who think the Jews are the serpent seed, just for being Jews, look at who it says were believing in him. Look at this next verse. So Yeshua said to those Yehudim, those Jews, who believed him, if you stay in my word, you are truly my taught ones. Note it says those Yehudim who believed in him. Hmm. Verse 32, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And they answered him, We are the seed of Abraham, and have been servants to no one at any time. How do you say you shall become free? And Yahshua answered them, Truly I say to you, everyone doing sin is a servant of sin. And the servant does not stay in the house forever. A son stays forever. If then the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. 
Now watch what he says next. I know that you are seed of Abraham. Right? Yahshua identifies them as the physical seed of Father Abraham here. All right? But you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I speak what I have seen with my father, and you do what you have heard from your father. All right, that's very important right there. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Yahshua said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has spoken to you the what? The truth which I heard from Elohim. Abraham did not do this. All right? So he says that he knows that they are seed of Abraham. All right? But then he also says that Abraham is not their father. Because they are not doing what Abraham would do. That's what he said. Okay? Because you are not doing Abraham's teachings. See, he's talking about two different types of fathering here. He's talking about two different types of ancestry within the same people. Okay, this is, this is not something supernatural that's going on here. This is, this is talking about one is of the genetics of Abraham and one is about the teachings of not from Abraham. All right, now, verse 41. You do the works of your father... Then they said to him, We were not born of whoring, for we have one father, Elohim. Yahshua said to them, If Elohim were your father, you would love me, because for I came forth from Elohim and am here, for I have not come of myself, but he who sent me. Why do you not know what I say? Because you are unable to hear my word. You are of your father, the devil. All right? Here he identifies the father of their spirit and their heart, the father of their teachings, the father of their walk. He's identifying who their head is. He's actually identifying who they are the azer of. He's pointing out who they watch and protect their head. Okay? And something, something interesting about this, where it, where it talks about that the serpent would strike the heel of the woman's seed and the seed, her seed would crush his head. I think that's what you're actually seeing here. You're seeing those who are possessing the seed or the teachings of the devil with a desire to kill the seed, which is the truth that the sower sows. Okay? And what's he doing? He is crushing their head. He's crushing what they're striking with, with the truth. Said that. Amen. Continuing on in verse 44. You are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you wish to do. See, so see how it gets back to doing desire again? It's still going back to desire. It was going to desire in, in the beginning in bare sheet, and it's back to desire. He was a murderer from the beginning and has not stood in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaks the lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. He is tying this fatherhood right here back to the transgression of the serpent. That's what he's doing. And because I speak the truth, you do not believe me. Who of you proves me wrong concerning sin? And this is very interesting because what does Yahshua do? Yahshua is constantly turning people back to what? The Torah. All right? and away from the tradition of the elders which nullify the commands of Elohim. And if I speak the truth, why do you not believe me? Verse 47. He who is of Elohim hears the words of Elohim. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of Elohim. I bet that made him mad. (laughs) The Yehudim answered and said to him, Do we not say well that you are a Shemaranite, a Samaritan, and have a demon? Yahshua answered, I do not have a demon, but I value my Father, and you do not value me. And I do not seek my own esteem. There is one who is seeking and is judging. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone guards my word, he shall never see death at all. The Yehudim said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. 
Abraham died and the prophets, and you say if anyone guards my words that he shall never taste death at all. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died and the, prop, and, and the prophets died? Whom do you make yourself? And Yahshua answered, If I esteem myself, my esteem is none at all. It is my father who esteems me, of whom you say that he is your Elohim. And you have not known him, but I know him. And if I say, I do not know him, I shall be like you, a liar. But I do know him, and I guard what? His word. Your father Abraham, okay, he's tying him back to a genetic line now, was glad that he should see my day, and he saw it and did rejoice. The Yehudim therefore said to him, You're not yet fifty years old. And and you have seen Abraham? Yahshua said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham came to be, I am. Therefore they picked up stones to throw at him, but Yahshua was hidden and went out of the set-apart place, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Isn't that interesting? So, turn, turn again to Matthew 23 now. Matthew 23, we're going to start reading verse 1 and be on page 944. Matthew 23, verse 1. Then Yahshua spoke to the crowds and to his taught ones, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees. See, this seems to be the ones who he has the trouble with. Okay? The scribes and the Pharisees Sit on the seat of Moshe. Therefore, whatever they say to you to guard, guard to do while they're on the seat of Moshe. But do not do according to their works, for they say and they do not do. For they bind heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on men's shoulders, but their fingers they do not wish to, mo to move them. And they do all their works to be seen by men, and they make their tefillin wide and lengthen the zitzio to their garments, and they love the best places, place at feasts, and the best seats in the congregations, and greetings in the marketplace, and to be called by men, Ravi, Ravi, my teacher, my teacher. But you do not be called Ravi, for one is your teacher. Okay, there's the teaching again. Okay, there's the teaching again. The serpent was instructing in one way, and these guys are teaching in the same type of lies, but Yahshua was teaching in what? The desire of the Father Yahweh. For one is your teacher, the Messiah, and you are all brothers. And do not call anyone on earth your father. For one is your father, he who is in the heavens. Neither be called leaders. For one is your leader, the Messiah. But the greatest among you shall be your servant. And whoever exalts himself shall be humbled. And whoever humbles himself shall be exalted. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Now, does everyone know what a hypocrite is? Hypocrite means an actor. It means somebody who is, who is, who is pretending to be someone different than who they are. All right? But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you shut up the reign of the heavens before men, for you do not go in, nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you eat up widows' houses and for a show, make long prayers because of this you shall receive greater judgment. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you go about the land and the sea to, look at this, win one convert. And when he is one, you make him a son of Gehenna twofold more than yourselves. Woe to you, blind guides who say, Whoever swears by the dwelling place, it does not matter, but whoever swears by the gold of the dwelling place is bound by oath. Fools and blind, for which is greater, the gold or the dwelling place that sets the gold apart? And whoever swears by the altar, it does not matter, but whoever swears by the gift that is on it is bound by oath. Fools and blind, for which is greater, the gift or the altar that sets the gift apart? He then who swears by the altar swears by it and by all that is upon it. And he who swears by the dwelling place swears by it and by him who is dwelling in it. 
And he who swears by the heaven swears by the throne of Elohim and by him who is sitting upon it. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you tithe the mint and the anise and the cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the Torah, the right ruling. Okay, that's very important, the right ruling and the compassion, and the belief. These need to have been done without neglecting the others. Blind guides, straining out a gnat and swallowing a camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside they are filled with plunder and unrighteousness. Blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and dish so that the outside of them becomes clean too. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you're like whitewashed tombs, which outwardly indeed look well, but inside are filled with dead men's bones and all uncleanliness. Do you realize how far he just condemned them here? He, you're not even supposed to touch a grave, all right, because of the, you become unclean. And he's saying that they're walking around like graves full of dead men's bones. So you too outwardly indeed appear righteous to men, but inside you are filled with hypocrisy and lawlessness. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and decorate the monuments of the righteous and say, if we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would not have taken part with them in the blood of the prophets. Thus, you bear witness against yourselves that you are the sons of those who did murder the prophets. And you fill up the measure of your Fathers, serpents, brood of adders. How would you escape the judgment of Gehenna? You know, vipers are very beautiful outwardly, all right? But inwardly, they are full of deadly poison, like father, like son. Verse 34. Because of these, see, I send you prophets and wise men and scholars of Scripture. Some of them you shall kill and impale, and some of them you shall flog in your congregations and persecute them, persecute from city to city, so that on you should come all the righteous blood shed on the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the dwelling place and the altar. Truly I say to you, all this shall come upon this generation. Yerushalayim, Yerushalayim, killing the prophets and stoning those who were sent to her. How often I wish to gather your children together the way a hen gathers her chickens under her wings, but you would not. See, your house is left to you laid waste, for I say to you from now on, you shall by no means see me until you say, blessed is he who is coming in the name of Yahweh. Okay, so... There, there's, there's a lot about the serpent seed versus the seed of the son of Adam. Would you agree? But what's this got to do with the woman? Remember, this is about the serpent seed and the sin of the woman. All right? Do you have a woman? Yahweh gave her to you to do what a Dom's woman was supposed to do with him. She's supposed to watch and protect her head. Your Azair. She's supposed to watch and protect her head. It's her job to tell you when she sees transgression in the home and it's her job to be a righteous example. It's your job to listen to her wise counsel because that's part of why you've been blessed with her. If you do not listen to her wise counsel, then she cannot fulfill her role to you as a wife. Does that mean that everything she says is right? No, she's a human being and can make wrong choices. Does it mean you should probably listen if she's counseling in ways of righteousness? Yep. You see, there, there are some men who think that because they're a man, 
that this means that they're a king who's supposed to be served and ruled with an iron fist. They have an attitude like, if I want anything out of you, I'll let you know what I want for supper. By the same token, there are women who are like, I want him to be the head of my house and I'm going to make sure he does it the way I say or else. And that's not the way it works either. You're supposed to be a team. There is no I in team. But men... She's been created to be your helper, and that means walking in paths of righteousness. All right. Proverbs 31. Page. Oh, we're going to be on page 755. We're going to start reading in verse 10. Proverbs 31, verse 10. Who does find a capable wife? For she is worth far more than rubies. The heart of her husband shall trust her, and he has no lack of gain. She shall do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She shall seek wool and flax, and with delight she works with her hands. She shall be as the ships of Tarshish. She brings in her food from afar. She also rises while it's still night, and provides food for her household and a portion for her girls. She shall consider a field and buy it. From her profits, she shall plant a vineyard. She shall gird herself with strength and strengthen her arms. She shall taste when her gain is good. Her lamp does not go out by night. She shall stretch out her hand to the distaff, and her hand shall hold the spindle. She shall extend her hand to the poor, and she shall reach out her hand to the needy. She's not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household is dressed in scarlet. She shall make tapestry for herself. She is dressed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She shall make fine linen and sell them and shall give girdles for the merchants. Strength and splendor are her garments and she rejoices in time to come. She shall open her mouth with what? Wisdom. And on her tongue is the Torah of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household. You see that? And does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children shall rise up and call her blessed, her husband too, and he praises her. Many daughters have done nobly, but you have risen over them all. Loveliness is deceptive and prettiness is vain. A woman who fears Yahweh is to be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. Hallelujah. Now, I do want to look at one more passage. But it's probably, well, one of I'll read to you. Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel chapter 3. We're going to start reading verse 17 and be on page 529. Ezekiel 3, 17. Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. And you shall hear a word from my mouth and shall warn them for me. When I say to the wrong, you shall certainly die. And, and you have not warned him nor spoken to warn the wrong from his wrong way to save his life. That same wrong man shall die in his crookedness and his blood. I require at your hand. But if you have warned the wrong and he does not turn from his wrong nor from his wrong way, he shall die in his crookedness and you have delivered your being. And when a righteous one turns from his righteousness and shall do unrighteousness, then when I have put a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because you did not warn him, he shall die in his sin and his righteousness, which he has done, is not remembered. And his blood I require at your hand. 
But if you have warned the righteous one that the righteous should not sin, and he did not sin, he shall certainly live because he has been warned and you have delivered your being. Did you see up where it says, Son of man, I have made you a watchman over the house of Israel. You remember we read that right away. Um, do you know that Yahweh made Hawa to be a watchman over her house? She was supposed to watch and go watch out and guard her head. And he's there. Now, I almost use Ezekiel 33. Let me because it says, when the people set up a watchman over them. Okay, that's what it says. He's supposed to do the same thing as what we just read right here. And gentlemen, you chose her. And 33 says that when the watchman sees the sword coming, it's his job to sound the ram's horn. Men, don't cast your helper, your helper aside. Okay? Don't cast your helper aside. It's her job to sound the ram's horn. She is the watchman that Yahweh has set up in your kingdom. If she sounds the ram's horn and you don't listen, she's cleared herself and your blood's on your own head. Listen to her wise counsel. You know what? She's only doing what Yahweh made her to do and doing what Yahweh failed to do. And you know what? That's, that's sort of a, 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 a little jewel in her crown, I mean. That's a jewel in her crown. She's only doing what Yahweh made her to do. Think about that. You don't have to turn here. I'll just tell you this from Proverbs 12. 1. Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but he who hates reproof is stupid. Reject the serpent seed and listen to your woman when she speaks in righteousness. Not if she speaks in transgression, but when she speaks righteousness, she's doing what Yahweh created her to do. And ladies, by the same token, if your husband speaks to you in righteousness, he's watching out for you too. Because you see, if we're going to walk as Yahshua walked, we've got to crush that serpent's head as well. Amen? We've got to crush that serpent's head as well because he's going to be striking at our heel. Reject the seed of the serpent, and the two shall become a child. Yahweh bless you and guard you. Yahweh make his face to shine upon you and show favor to you. Yahweh lift up his face upon you and give you his complete contentment. Hey, hey, and he can make a way. Hey, hey, so humble yourself and pray and guard his Torah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Oshiana, Oshiana.